You're listening to Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. My name is Kel. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another session of Ghetto Therapy. <laughs> I like that. Ghetto yeah. Therapy. I mean, it's what it is. Trufant, I mean, how are you guys even, doing? We don't even know what we're talking about. Doing well, my brother. Doing well. How about yourself? Doing all right. Doing good. It was a nice 88 degree day here down in Las Vegas. So, you know, been back in my short shorts and oh. uh, it's been good. I know Jess loves that. Who wears short shorts? Uh, well, it snowed here. I was just going to say what? it snowed a couple of days ago. Yeah. The sun was out today. Snow oh, kind of hit. Oh, Global hell. warming is slowly fucking Seattle because this is insane. It was actually really cold today. It was sunny, but it was <laughs> really cold. Mm -hmm. It's the middle of April. I know. And it I know. snowed? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Scary stuff. I don't miss that shit at all. Mm. Um, kids are on spring break this week, right? Just one. Public school are on spring break. I think last week and this week. And uh, private schools, they're aligned with Jesus. And so <laughs> their spring break <laughs> is <laughs> falls in line with Easter. So our kids will be home. The next rest week. of them will be home next week. Got you. Any plans? To try to keep our sanity. No. I know that's my plan I'm not even going to. Here. I'm going to pretend like they're not here. Right. They're on their own. And the dog. You guys don't try to like keep them out the house, keep them busy on spring we break? We usually go out of town. Got you. But um, because our two older girls are going to nationals for cheer, we cannot leave. And we just oh. did Disney, so they don't need to right. Go and nowhere. we just went to Disney. And, and, um, mm -hmm. Even though from that, my point I keep of trying view, to tell Marcus, he keeps making it seem like, even though this is this is work. Well, never mind. Every vacation is work, but it was for cheer, and we just so happened to bring all the family down and took them to Disney. And Marcus considers that like a legit vacation for the kids. If you leave out the state, no. if you touch. <laughs> The soil of a different state. If you step foot into Disney, to me, that's a that's trip. a win. That's that a is trip. a perk for the kids, and they should be appreciative. And well, check that off the they're list. Not appreciate it. I know, but I'm saying as far as spring break and all that, and they do so. Um, they do so much. So why not just chill and relax for? Well, Kel's a right. They need to get the fuck out the house. We'll figure it out. I don't know. Maybe we'll lock yeah. them outside. <laughs> I'm game. Well, uh, today's uh, episode is pretty interesting. I uh, found mm -hmm. a really, really neat article online um, about silly things that make you a jealous partner. You guys ready to go down this rabbit hole? Well, I've, I don't even know what that means, but go. Okay. We'll find out. We'll find out together. Um, so the first one is guarding their phone. Um, do you know anyone or... Has anyone ever been in a situation where they're like, you know, my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my husband or my wife, they act real funny when it comes to their phone? Are they hiding something or? Naturally, you would think that uh, they were hiding something. Um, I don't know. I think when Marcus and I first started uh, dating, he, no. Yeah, I think he tried to guard his phone, but he wasn't really smart about it. Um <laughs> But I used to sleep with my phone in my pocket uh, way back in the day. But now he sleeps with his phone on his chest. And then it ends up on my side of the bed. So doesn't, hey, yep. we're not guarding anymore. But yeah, so as far as um, you see it all over social media, mm -hmm. I saw a um, video or whatever. And it was this guy that was breaking hella tackles on the football field and he was running through everybody. And the caption was that if I get tackled, then my girl gets to go through my phone. So I showed this dude and he was just running through everybody. So it is a, a, a thing. And I think on both sides, I don't just think it's a guy thing. I think it's a guy oh, and yeah. gal thing. So there's something to that. And I don't know if it's just jealousy or insecurity, but most of the time, you can feel the energy and you know, okay, I probably um, need to look at this phone because there's probably some, some scandalous stuff in there. 
So, hey. You, well, when you got your phone and you're like completely turned and you work the angle back to yeah, your partner. 45, um, make sure that, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that happens. And, you know, some people might want to guard their phone from their partner for different reasons. I don't know. Maybe you're searching something you don't want them to see, or maybe you have taken some pictures that you don't want them to see. I don't know. I have a question. So do you guys think in a marriage or just any kind of relationship, is there like such thing as invasion of privacy? I think, so I believe so. I yeah. think so. I believe so. I think so. Yeah. Just because you're together, um, that doesn't mean that it's not open season. That you're still not an individual, <laughs> and maybe sometimes that gets lost in translation because right. we're together and right. everything is shared. But, but then it's oh, yeah. Okay. I need my space. Um, give me in my feet. phone at times. Right. I mean, it's my space, right? Right. It's not my phone. Is your phone and shit? No. <laughs> Back it up. Right. So, yeah, I believe that happened. And it should be respect right. and trust on both sides. But when the trust is broken, that's when the issues come. Like I said, the energy is there. So Right. Like when you're sleeping with your phone in your pocket, the energy is definitely <laughs> there. I felt yeah. safe like that. I, yeah. And don't sleep with your phone on your chest, Marcus. That's how you, you want to get I know. freaking cancer. Like A bit of radiation. and so, Oh, yeah. you know what? I didn't so, even think yeah. about that because literally he does it. Pretty much every night, yeah, man, or it's, it's not good. in the bed in the between us, or on the side, yeah. or oh, God, no, yeah. I put my phone. I turn my phone off. Oh, Completely really? Off. Oh, yeah. I turn the, I turn my that off, and sometimes even unplug the Wi Fi in the house. You'll sleep a lot better. It's oh, it's very. I might interesting. try that. I might because you have all this. You have all these microwaves bouncing around, mm-hmm. floating around. Unplug it. I'm telling you, you're gonna you'll sleep better. It sounds weird, but like. I've been doing it for years now. I actually get way better sleep. Well, for those that are anxious and hypochondriacs such as myself, you need the Wi-Fi on because you never know when you're going to wake up out of your sleep and Google whether your aching finger is some type of fungus disease or cancer. <laughs> and most of the time, it's cancer. That is so, fair. So, um, yeah. Goddamn WebMD. WebMD, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a doctor. That's funny. No, yeah, I mean, do you think, I believe, well, I believe in this too. If your spouse is feeling some type of way and has an inkling or a weird suspicion about your phone and they ask, can I please see your phone? If they ask nicely, I feel like you should give it to them. If you don't have anything to hide. Right? Yes. But at the same time, if you're comfortable in your relationship, you shouldn't be asking to see your dude's phone or girl's phone. Would you do that to me? Let me see your last text type of uh, phone. I don't know, Carol. I agree. But like just said, um, there's something about being comfortable. Instead of saying, let me see your phone, you say... Is there anything going on? It just gets straight to the point, right? Right. Or when you're really comfortable, you know their password. Th- that too. Yeah. That too. Well, I'm saying like let's. Say, I'm saying that let's say if someone in their relationship they're going through some stuff, and they kind of maybe even have the smoking gun. Like I know this motherfucker's texting somebody else. I caught a glimpse of it. I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Dang, come on, let me see your phone. That's tough. Right. Well, then you hand it. You hand it over. You hand it over. You can't. You hand it over. You're going to dig yourself in a deeper hole if you don't, right? right. Or, 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 you or. Go, oh my God, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, shoot. Distract, distract. Erase, delete, erase, delete. erase, <laughs> delete. I got to go to the bathroom real X quick. Out. I'll be Come right back. back. Hand it over. Or, um, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say now. Or you just say, um, you don't want to look at my phone um, if you get asked. If, if, if there's a smoking gun. You say, um, you know the deal. You don't want to yeah, look at my phone. If you don't want to look at it, they say <laughs> that when you deal. go looking for something, you usually find it, right? Yeah. So you look let's, hard enough. Let's just um, move forward and let's work on our relationship, and let's agree on that. And then when you're sleep, in a fantasy, in a fantasy, <laughs> right? And right. then when you're sleep, because everybody doesn't sleep with their phone inside their pocket, then that's when I come over. <laughs> 
and go in the corner and completely go through every text message, your entire history of messages, your entire Google search engine, all of your pictures, all of your social media, in your DMs. When you go looking for it. And then I put your phone back. Like you I never did it. it. Mm-hmm. You guys ever see that meme? It's it's a cold meme of uh, the girl asking to see her dude's phone. And he gets up and he goes, here, look. But don't stay here in the room. I don't want to hear you crying. And like, <laughs> give some, give some phone. Oh, <laughs> my heavy. gosh. Yeah. Um, Marcus, <laughs> when I was planning his surprise 30th birthday, kind of a, you know, true test. I don't know. I had to take his phone. And I don't even know if you took. I don't even know if you knew I took your phone. Uh, um, you told me, but I didn't know. Okay. Because I was trying to get contacts to invite. And you know he has a nickname for every person in his phone. So I wasn't sure if I was texting a former jump off or a friend <laughs> just based off the nicknames you can't tell and i'm like ah. right. but i think i texted a couple people that were like huh <laughs> what so, but yeah the thing about doing that in this um the the of course the fun side of that is that is funny or what everybody got a nickname but over time you forget people's actual name right, right. so that's kind of where i was i didn't know people's names so i didn't want to do the the text and a roundabout way. How do you ask somebody their name and you've been knowing them for like five, six years, right? Even though you don't see them, but I know. so damn. Hey. But the moral of the story is is that we came out clean, right? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, unscathed. Right. So it was refreshing, even though I was confused about the names and wasn't sure. But it was refreshing to go through his phone, and I'm like, oh, okay. There's no. But no the phone fuckery. has killed a lot of relationships um, throughout yeah. history, Kale. So that is a, that's a good uh, question. So um, I don't know what Big advice we technology. have for that. Thanks. As a couple, but if you go looking for it, you're going to find it in most situations. So just be careful, right? Right. Right. Well, here, next one. This one's interesting, this next one, because I have a friend who personally dealt with this. A friend who... I know you got a person that we both, all three of us mutually know. I know you know Jess, but I'm not going to say their name. Oh, but um, they they went through this issue with uh, their spouse. Taking a sudden interest in fitness or personal appearance. So I had a buddy, I had a buddy back in the day. Mm-hmm. We used to work out together and he was a really, really big person. He lost a whole bunch of weight and his wife got jealous about that. She mm-hmm. was just like, well, why are you always at the gym? Why are you? He's like, well, and, and he invited her like, hey, well, we can do this together. But she got real bitter about it. Right. Ending up, um, he stopped working out. Some things happened. And he kind of put weight back on and everything was all hunky dory and happy again. But then she started kind of started to lose losing weight and was like new self, new me, blah, 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 while he was unhealthy again. Yes. And so I, I never understood that one when it's your partner trying to better themselves. And if they even invite you to come take part in it with them, right? What do you guys say to that? Well, I mean, you're working out and doing all this kind of stuff and getting into shape. It's for you, but at the same time, it's for everybody too. Because everybody takes note. So... She could have been a little jealous of that, but the fact that she waited until he was down and <laughs> kicked him even further and was like, mm, she might have really been just envious of his ability to do what she couldn't do. Mm. Damn. I agree. I agree with Jess. I think it's two sides to that. It just depends, right? Um, so he lost all this weight. Did his energy change? Was he, he more... Um, outgoing or whatever and and kind of leaving her in the dust or was he more like okay babe I'm slimming down and let's do this together let's get healthy together you know we see this all the time what on doctor now oh yeah but but I'm just saying this it sounds like a scandalous situation I don't like it it doesn't sound good to me if your spouse is doing something for for uh health reasons and then you hate on that and then you turn around and do the same thing and 
they're supposed to celebrate you. To me, it, and this is it. it um, um, but you already said it was the girl that was hating on the dude. So I think that's that's foul. But I can see guys doing it too. But I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Well, going from my exactly. my six hundred pound life. A lot of these people choose these mates that are heavier because they have low self-esteem. They know they'll never leave them. They know they need them comfortable, to take right? care of them, all that kind of stuff. And when they start to lose the weight, their partners get all butt hurt about it because they're kind of like, hey, I don't need you to wipe my ass anymore. <laughs> I don't need you to wipe my ass right. anymore. Like, it's a fear so of getting left. It's a fear <laughs> so bad to say. of getting Fuck, left. Yes. But I think that's very unhealthy. If your partner has to be down and out and be needy and pretty much be um, on bed rest for you right. to feel comfortable. That's a and he might have been a little you know, depressed about it. And then he got his confidence and right. she was like. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like yeah. that at, so, at yeah. all. For as long as I've known him, he was already always a big guy, you know, and then he was like, I need to do something about this and took charge of his life and was looking great. And I just remember we'd work out. And he'd be like, yeah, man, she's and I was, I'm like, what? And I'm like, why doesn't she want y'all do it together? Then make it a couple's thing. Make, you know, so and I get maybe if she's feeling like excluded and she doesn't feel like she's you yes. know being included that I totally understand. But the fact that you've you're, you've been invited to the party and you just don't want to come to the party. And you just hating on my man, man. I think that's a bad look. Totally a bad yeah. look. And that could push him even further away. I mean, in my right. opinion. Well, is he back fat now? Yeah. Well, see? Mm. Yeah. She's good. Unfortunately. Damn it. All right. Uh, the next one. This one I always think is pretty funny, too, because it involves the internet. Liking other people's photos on Instagram. Like, I've known <laughs> and heard of people in situations where it's like, yo, my girl got mad that I liked, I don't know, someone that's not even attainable to this dude, like a Kim Kardashian I, picture. Well, why are you liking that? I like Cardi B's photo, so it was a thing. That's silly. I think that's silly. I Why would you like a photo of, like, Kim Kardashian? Like, why? What's the reasoning for you to literally go onto your phone and go, like she had some why? fly sunglasses on or something i don't know or why? her kids they were fly they were looking why are home. you even on her page like that i oh, don't God. know that's weird this social media thing is gonna um it's take the, the show the round end. and round it's, right it's the devil <laughs> so my thing is is that even if you what's the difference between liking what you see and liking the photo is it um proving or is it the other people seeing it or what's the difference? It's just, you're literally taking time out of your day <laughs> to like somebody's photo like that. It's like, really? You, you had to, that's like an extra step. It's one thing to look, but it's another thing to go, you know what? I like, don't, I think it's just as like, bad if you're, um, what do they call it? Stalking somebody's page and you're going down the page for hours and you don't like anything, but you continue to look at everything. What is the real difference? The like? Because who the fuck said you have to like? Who made that? That's the problem. Why? Why are likes such a big deal? Most of the time it's dudes. So dudes are stupid and they'll do that. <laughs> but women, um, on the other hand, will stalk somebody's page and not like it. So what... Is the difference, right? That's well, who's true. worse in that situation? Because we're looking, just like you're looking, except for you take an extra step. That's what I'm saying. The, and we're not doing that. The stupidity part, but who's worse? There is, to me, you are. I don't think there's a difference. You I are. have a question. I have a question. Here we go. What's worse, though? Liking the photo or following the person and not liking anything? Um... Well, isn't that the same as kind of stalking their page and not yeah. really saying anything? I, I mean, but the thing is, is like you're not stalking. It's just when it shows up in your timeline, it shows up in your timeline, right? Well, wait, which one is, well, which one is worse if you're f actually following that person? And maybe, because, you know, sometimes stuff pops right. up in your feed or somebody else's thing or whatever. Right. And um, you might 
you know, be inquisitive and go and look at their page. But if you're literally following all these people like Kim Kardashian and all these <laughs> women, I'd be like, oh, okay. Is it necessary? Social media, I think we have to be careful. And it comes down to the relationship, I think. If, if um, there's reason to be insecure, I mean, if your dude or your lady is always looking at on the other people in real life, I'm not talking about in social media life, but in real life, and you, you catch her, you know, you're out and about, you guys are at dinner or you're out at nightclubs, et cetera, et cetera, and um, they have a wondering eye. Girls don't do that. We are way too smart. Girls do it. We already had this conversation. Girls do it. I uh, well, remember my dad do literally it. breaking his neck. They don't get caught. To look at but another they do woman. It. And like I said, if the guy is feeling the <laughs> energy his neck. from his girl that she may be everybody's girl or she might be looking around a little too much on the disrespectful side, maybe you don't want her liking a bunch of dude stuff on um, IG. But So you're my pimp now. You're looking around a little too much? Yeah. <laughs> what? Put your, uh, head down. Down. put your head down. Look right. at the ground. Right. Put, your head, yeah. put your eyes down. <laughs> but I'm saying, I'm trying to say it comes down to the relationship and where the comfortability is because that could be right. insult to injury if there's already stuff going on. So I can feel that. Right. All right. The next one, and this one is kind of, I get why you'd feel some, someone feels type of way about this, well, depending on the situation, but talking to a friend about their feelings first before talking to you about it. Didn't we kind of have an episode like this where we're talking about going to the the spouse, going to the friend, the former mm. lover or whatever, um, talking to their friend about their, how would you know that this person talked to their friend ahead of time? Do they tell you? Maybe if they brought up like, yeah, I, I was talking to such and such about it. And they said, and it's like, well, damn, why I'm your spouse. Why didn't you come talk to me first? Um, I don't really care. I don't think so. I don't think that bothers me. Yes, please go. Go talk to your friends. Please do that before you come to me. Go talk to your friends. I think it just depends, right? If it's between me and you and it's something that we need to discuss and we haven't really discussed it or got to the bottom of it, um, I feel like it should be a spouse to spouse first. Sometimes you need. Sometimes you need, but sometimes bringing in other people could... Uh, give you the wrong advice, give you the wrong information because people think they know, but they don't but know they have shit. no idea. Yeah. So, um, I just say, be careful, but especially if it's your bitter ass friend. Right. Yeah. So, you know, fuck every female that. got that bitter ass. Yeah. Fuck that nigga. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, girl, that's why you've been single forever. Anyway, and you go home and you throw all his shit out on the street and you do this and do that. And yeah, so you just got to be careful about the advice that you listen to. Mm -hmm. This is a side note question, but do you think it's acceptable when women do that waiting to exhale type shit? I was getting ready to say Angela Bassett, that dude. Burned down the house and the car and all that. She, yeah, she, I burned, she put the clothes in the car and burnt the oh, car. Okay, yeah, yeah. Closing the car and burnt left the car. left eye burnt the house. Yes. Well, that's intense. And what do you think? Oh Jess? nope, I was getting ready to tell a story, but ooh, ooh, ooh. my thing is you can never tell people to act in a traumatic situation, right? So um, you never know what you're gonna do, right? It's not okay, but it's hard to be okay when you put somebody through something that is a. Uh, extremely traumatic right and you oh. gather your friends and you take a credit card and pop open the door and wreck some shit kale again man uh, violence is never the answer we're just trying uh, to get never. To, we're just trying Allegedly. to send a message but people lose it man and they 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 get pushed to the edge um so I mean, it's easy to say that violence is never the answer, but violence happens every day, every second. I don't know what the stats say, but Are, people... We're talking about, like, burning stuff and, right, like... yeah. Okay. And that's violence, though. That's I, violence. I, I, you it's a form of violence. I, burning stuff. Yes. You're destroying all that. Yeah, sugar in your gas tank, that's violence. Well, sometimes you gotta. And sometimes you're 
those friends that are supporting your friend and you toxic help them destroy somebody's apartment. There's just, you might as well just go ahead and oh this say. well that that story was not mine about destroying somebody's mm-hmm. apartment, but I participated. And we like literally went in this dude's refrigerator. That's when it's not took cool. Took lunch though. meat out. That's not threw it on the cool. walls. All as oh, a group, we went crazy. So I condone, or, or I could almost act right. Understand if it's you know a girl to guy, but when you go and recruit the friends and all this other foolishness, nah, we were like, oh, she wasn't even trying to, to do it. Everybody needs to go to jail. And we were like, everybody oh, needs to go to jail. No. So Fuck yeah, yeah, let's no. go in there and fuck nah, some shit up. Not at all. Nope. It's none of y'all business. Ratchet shit. Mm-hmm. Guess God what? Damn. Ratchet. That's right. <laughs> damn. Put a, a fucking accent over that shit. Go ahead. Oh, this next one. I think we've talked, kind of talked about this before, but I think because I think we've all said that we've known people that's kind of dealt with this is spouses getting jealous of the other one needing girl or guy time. Yes. Yeah. Did we talk about that? We have. I think we like we like briefly did one time. Side note: but, is 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 smearing chicken wings on a windshield considered violence? Maybe against the chicken or the okay. Car. Back to back back to your yeah. Go That's ahead. a little different though. You could just pressure wash that real quick, and it'll just come right off. Nope. Right. But it putting didn't. but putting sugar in someone's gas tank. That's destroying property. Chicken wings on a windshield is uh, proving a point. <laughs> Taking this, and so uh, is stance. throwing lunch meat and yeah, nah. destroying tapes and shit. Yeah, I nah. that is proving a point as well. Nah, that's destroying property. I was delicate with the chicken wings. I didn't break the windshield, and but there was still one left over like six months later that's under the true. hood. That could that's have damaged true. my engine. Very true. Yeah. Well, the dude in the apartment. I know he didn't get his deposit back. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, y'all probably made holes in the wall and shit. It's just disrespectful. I think they still stayed together, so. Mm. Oh, fucking black people. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I assume these was niggas. Uh, so, yeah, needing girl. <laughs> yeah, needing girl and guy time. How do you guys feel about that? I know I have I have quite a few friends whose wives do not like it. Why do you need to go hang out with your friends? Why do you need to go? And it's like. Me. Really? It's right like. Here. But I assume he likes you to go hang out with your girls. So why is it a problem when you go and hang out with when he hangs out with his guys? He doesn't necessarily like me to go hang out with my girls like that either. Um, are your friends a bad influence? No, it's more of I want to spend. I want to spend time with you. Let me see. We right? Don't, do I do I not? We don't. Do I got that wrong? get a lot of time well we we try to make time for when it's just us but i don't think we hate on each other like that though no not anymore i it, used to though i know but it's more <laughs> now kale it's more okay are you gonna leave me with the kids and the dog and all the stuff that at, right and that's usually, how it was when i would get mad it i'm takes like two or three I people to do right dying here yeah, and i'm trying to run off and Go kick it with the boys. Of course, it's cool to have your girl time and your guy time, mm-hmm. and but but not at the expense of the other person. And that was kind of my thing. I would just be like, "Oh, okay, I'll be back." And the house would be a tornado, right? And um, now that I've grown up, that's not the best thing to do if you want to have your guy time, right? right. So and sometimes it's, a way to it's do like, it. "Oh, it's please go, please go." Yeah. So I can just, especially if the kids aren't home. Yeah. <sighs> Just sit in the house by myself. Oh man, that is rare and that is appreciated. And it's needed. And it's priceless. It's needed. Yes. I think yeah, I think for a healthy marriage or any relationship, you just need your your time to yourself to recharge. You know what I mean? Like it may not be, you know, going out and you know, doing the whole thing, but if you can maybe just give me like an hour just to right. you know that get my thoughts together. Right. Yeah, that's not possible in this house. I know now, and especially like the last couple of times, we've tried to get together as guys. Or like we'd be all hype and be like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go kick it," and then come, you know, nine forty-five, we'd be like, "Man, it's time to go home." They man. never make it out. It's like, damn, they don't make it out. We definitely ain't what we used to be, but just the fact that we got together as guys and get to laugh, get to talk a little, yeah, 
crap or whatever is fun. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's recharging. It's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the last one, not texting back. Um, does that, that one's usually, that one's usually a doozy because I mean, I've even been in situations and, and early in my relationships and stuff like not texting back and you don't even care. You don't even text me back. And it's like, what? Like I didn't even read a text message yet. Like, <laughs> and you left me this long ass novel. I'm not about to read this whole one long ass paragraph you just sent me in this big ass blue bubble. I do not care if you're driving. I do not care if you're in a meeting. I do not care. I don't care where you're at. You better respond to my text and you better respond with an appropriate response. If I have to text you two and three times, the third text, it ain't good. <laughs> it ain't good. And how often does that happen in you guys' house? All the time. And the thing about it is that, okay. And he'll be downstairs <laughs> and I'll be upstairs. <laughs> um, I put my phone on silent a lot, right? So um, I mix, miss text messages and calls etc he'd be on his phone 24 hours a day but seven days a week you should never miss are you moving my around text. and um there's a situation where your phone has to be off sometimes you forget to turn it back on but what i was going to say is is that i get those angry texts right and me being not the the most savvy texter and speller and all this kind of stuff i mm. come back and sometimes my grammar is off right so my anger um my angry response doesn't go over as well as I would like, and I usually lose that battle. But and I uh, will correct. Yeah, your grammar. I guess she corrects me, and it. I'm like, okay. Hey, well, you just first of all, that thing. is not how you spell that yeah, or say that. So, so yeah, yeah, pouring salt in the wound. But an uh, angry text is never good because a lot of stuff gets lost in translation. I feel like in text and. No, I mean what I text. I see a text. And I, I text get what I mean. Very angry. And I would rather wait to get face to face with I it. I see you under there. And then um, it could really go down. So. Is there ever a time, has there ever been a time, let's say, Jess, you, you've sent the, the angry text. And let's say Marcus just hasn't seen, didn't see the text, hasn't seen it yet, right? And then he just comes upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, o it's over. I'm a fire off on you. Pew, pew. I, or I'm going to go find you. I'm going to come down to your job. <laughs> I'm going to come to your friend's house and be like, did you not get my text? Did you not get my text? So, yeah. Yeah. And that's when you tell the homies to lock the doors and then close the curtains and right. all that. Cause we got a, we got a, we got a wildling mm -hmm. outside. So let's keep it kosher. A wildling. Though. Yeah. Last thing I want to leave you guys with. Some people think that like jealousy is like a form of showing how much they like love somebody or like care. Do you mm. believe that at all? I think it's a little psychotic personally. No, I think it's controlling and di insecure and dominating. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. On the other side of that, some um, people like to um, see their spouse in a jealous True, they get a rise off of that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So get a weird. kick yeah. out of it. Very weird. Very weird. I don't like that at all. But, but it's like saying, I'm being jealous of your friend because you really care about them a lot. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's not why. Yeah. Right. Odd. Very odd. Unhealthy. I think it's unhealthy. But <laughs> Yeah. Very. Well, this was great. Uh, truly Unruly, Marcus Trufant, Jessica Trufant. Uh, my name is Kel. Of course, follow these guys on IG. Marcus underscore Trufant, Jessica underscore Trufant, and the page Truly Unruly underscore podcast. Follow us on IG. Of course, you can listen to us on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Of course, uh, subscribe, leave a review. Catch us every Sunday on the Converge channel. And if you want to catch the visual, just search Truly Unruly on YouTube or search and subscribe to Marcus Trufant on on YouTube. I think that's it, right? That's it, brother. Good job. Cool. All right, y'all. Till next time, peace and much love.